A team from Caltech says they've got a tabletop experiment that might tell us whether space has tiny quantum fluctuations. They want to use single photons, the quantum of light, to closely track the distance between two mirrors. Why hasn't anyone thought of this earlier? Let's have a look. This new experiment could solve a big problem in physics. It's that gravity and quantum mechanics don't get along. Einstein's theory of gravity, general relativity, says that space-time is a smooth and well-behaved background. But quantum mechanics says nothing's smooth. Everything is jittery and noisy and a mass of probabilities. Physicists need a theory that combines gravity with quantum physics. This yet to be found theory is called quantum gravity, and one of the most general expectations you have of any theory of quantum gravity is that space and time also have quantum fluctuations. The new experiment wants to look for those. It's a straightforward design built on the same idea as gravitational wave interferometers such as LIGO. They want to use two interferometers next to each other, each of about 5 meters in size. At this size, they expect to see the biggest signal from the quantum fluctuations in the frequency range of a few tens of megahertz. For comparison, LIGO measures in the range of a few hundred hertz, so at a much lower frequency and much larger wavelength, respectively. The way that an interferometer works is that you shoot lasers back and forth between mirrors in two orthogonal directions and then compare the results. You adjust the length of the arms so that on one output port the waves exactly cancel out because there the interference is destructive. For this experiment they want to adjust the length so that if there's no noise from quantum fluctuations then they get an exact cancellation. And then they look for single photons that would arrive nevertheless. These single photons, so the idea, would then be signs of the quantum fluctuations of space. They first want to build a prototype of the experiment with a radius of about half a meter, then one with a target size of five meters, and then a second one. The second interferometer is there because they say that the noise they're looking for would be correlated in both interferometers, while other noise, such as that coming from the instruments themselves, would not be correlated. So they can use the second interferometer to tell noise from noise, basically. Look Looking for quantum fluctuations of space isn't a new idea. There have been various previous attempts to find them. Some physicists have said, for example, that such fluctuations should lead to a slight blurring in optical signals from distant stellar objects. This is because quantum fluctuations of space can change the exact distance the light travels. The problem is, however, that these light cone fluctuations, as they're called, are so tiny they don't add up to a measurable effect even if the light travels through the entire universe. This is so if you use the most conservative model for space-time fluctuations. Of course, you can invent more exciting theories. These new theories for space-time fluctuations can then be tested with experiments. For example, by looking for a suspicious systematic blurring in the light from distant quasars. To the extent that these theories could be tested, they have been ruled out. There has also been a previous experiment looking for a special type of holographic space-time fluctuations. It was called the Holometer and it ran at Fermilab using a similar two interferometer setup as the newly proposed experiment. The Holometer didn't find anything either. In both cases, the problem was that the fluctuations that they were looking for violate Lorentz invariance, a symmetry of Einstein's theories. But we know from other experiments that violations of these symmetries, if they exist, must be extremely small too small to be measurable in these new experiments. The effect they were looking for had been ruled out by other experiments already. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. The new experiment is looking for a specific type of quantum fluctuations, which they call geontropic. 
they're a consequence of Eric Verlinde's idea of entropic gravity, according to which gravity is a manifestation of the entanglement entropy in the space-time fluctuations. If that sounds like gibberish, don't worry, because they don't actually use this entanglement stuff. They simply postulate that there are some new sorts of space-time fluctuations which are isotropic, that is, like a balloon that inflates and deflates. They model these fluctuations with what they call the pixelon field, because they encode space-time pixels of sorts. Alas, if you look at the equations that they use, you can see immediately that they too violate Lorentz invariance. They claim in their paper that this symmetry violation is not in the fluctuations themselves, but comes from the interferometer, but that's just words and not represented by the mathematics that they use. So I'm sorry, but my prediction is that they won't find anything, because if such an effect existed, it'd be in conflict with other measurements already. Then again, I may be wrong, and this might be the experiment that'll finally get physics unstuck. Either way, I'll keep you up to date, so don't forget to subscribe. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples, like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.